you having a nice Edinburgh? Yeah. It's at that fraught time of Edinburgh for me. I got very drunk last night, and I don't know if you've ever done this, but I snogged a puppeteer. <laughs> like a proper ventriloquist bloke, right? And I was drunk in the meadows here in Edinburgh at three o'clock in the morning, and he started to put his hand up my dress. I was like, mate, you're not at work now. <laughs> but you know when you're really drunk and someone's being very persistent, eventually you go, I'll oh, sod it. If you can't beat them, join them. So I went, that's the way to do it! <laughs> Have you ever had one of those nights when you've been so drunk and behaved so badly that the next day you're convinced they're going to report it on the news? <laughs> 38-year-old mother of one was found upside down in a weedy bin outside Edinburgh Waverley Station, singing I Will Survive. <laughs> Eyewitnesses reported a man of 24. He was 24, for heaven's sake! I didn't realise that till I saw the news. <laughs> Calling her a taxi without moving his lips. <laughs> I'm a single mum, and it's tough dating when you're a single mum. If single dads are different, I hope I'm not insulting any men in the audience, but when women see a single dad, they often go, oh, look at him. He's so good with his children. He works so hard. He copes so beautifully with them every other weekend. <laughs> Whereas my ex-boyfriend called my little boy my baggage. He's four. He's not baggage. He's hand luggage. <laughs> I have an older brother. I'm the second child. My brother is the precious firstborn. Give me a cheer, firstborn children. <laughs> Applauding yourselves, they're the confident firstborns. You know why you're so confident? Because you firstborn children know that the reason you exist is because two people fell so madly in love with one another that they decided to create a human being out of that love. You are made from love. Well done. Give me a cheer, secondborns like me. We were not made from love. We were made to be toys for the firstborn. The only reason we exist is so that firstborn doesn't get bored on holiday. <laughs> Give me your thirdborn children. Yay! Not many photos of you. <laughs> My friend's got three. She goes, by the time the third one comes along, you just stick it in a bucket and give it a bit of barbed wire to chew on. <laughs> easy time when I was a kid. I was a fat kid at school and it was no fun being the fat kid at primary school because we used to play kiss chase. It's a horrible game and all the boys would chase all the sort of cute Lucy's and Rebecca's and they wouldn't chase me so there's no need for me to run so I stayed fat. <laughs> and some of the dinner ladies realised how tough it was for us chunky kids and they decided to sort of introduce other games. Pig in the middle was not the answer. <laughs> I had this teacher at school called Mrs. Robertson, and she changed my life when I was 14. She was really old, about 40. <laughs> and she had a face like a discarded Christmas walnut and about five teeth. And one of the girls in the class was chatting, the beautiful girls that all the boys fancied. And Mrs. Robertson, I'm about to do a terrible Scottish accent, she said, Karen Skelton, stop your chatter. This is an exam year. You have to concentrate on your studies. You're not going to have that pretty face forever. Look what happened to me! <laughs> what a gorgeous thing to say. And what a beautiful lesson I learned at 14. That it's not about being one of the pretty ones. What's really important is to know that walnuts can talk. <laughs> You've been a fantastic crowd. Thank you very much. <laughs>